keep it clean real quick before we get into it i gotta say i appreciate y'all the fact that i know a lot of y'all don't want to and a lot of people just they stop they like you know what i'm done consuming ravens content i don't want to hear nothing about the team i don't want to listen to nothing about the team i don't need or want any updates about our baltimore ravens because i'm tired of them right now i'm upset with them right now i don't like how the season ended and i get it and i respect it but for those of y'all that has still been coming through i appreciate y'all a lot so thank you for what y'all do um and also I, I didn't get a chance to listen to or watch the the presser from yesterday the season ending presser yet uh because we were just out all day yesterday um but how did it go how did i saw some different quotes from it and whatnot but i didn't want to speak on the quotes yet because i want to watch it for myself because i want to watch the entire thing i want to see the entire context i don't want to just look at a quote and be like all right no I, i'm not gonna do that um, so we'll talk about that early in the week. But how do y'all feel the press conference went? Did you have any questions that you had? Anything that you were wondering about the team? Did, did, did your question get answered? Did it get addressed? Uh, was there accountability? Was there blame? What 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 was it? How did that thing go? Uh, but anyway, um, somebody that uh, whew, got some strong feelings uh, for those Kansas City Chiefs is Adafe Away. And we know that saying where it says a, uh, a, a picture... What do they say? A, a pictures are worth a thousand words. And this is the perfect example of just that. Because Adal Fairway, uh, on his Instagram story, he posted a picture. And on that picture, he literally did not put not one single word. He put some numbers, but he did not put a one single word. But we all got his message clearly. Uh, in this picture, um, it's a picture of Patrick Mahomes. He's scrambling. Looks like he's maybe backing up or scrambling to the right. Um, and in the background, still in the frame, is Adafe Away, because you see that number 99 jersey. Kind of reminded me of Matt Judon real quick. But anyway, um, you see Adafe Away in the background. And with Adafe Away, he has a Chiefs arm wrapped all over him. Looks like they've probably given him a hug. Maybe they were trying to tell him a secret or something like that. But we would have to assume that he is being held. But by the numbers that are on this picture, it says 24-7, 365. And we know what those numbers mean those numbers mean all the time and what we have to assume Adafi Away is referring to is the Kansas City Chiefs the fact that they get away with holding all the time they're always holding this has been said about the Chiefs before uh, and it will be said about the Chiefs again but Adafi Away I respect it I, I really respect um, him still being willing to voice his opinion uh, on the game through his story because you always hear about that 24-hour rule with players. And we always hear about players, how they um, they get over a loss a lot faster than fans do. Some fans, they never get over losses. And, and especially with this one, this game right here, like, I couldn't be mad or blame any fan that never got over it because there's some there's a lot of questionable stuff that happened in this game. Um, some stuff that we will never understand. Some stuff that we would love answers to and clear, straightforward, blunt answers to. But... We're never going to get. And I'm not even referring to the presser yesterday because, again, I didn't watch it. I, I saw some different answers to some questions, but I'm not even referring to that. But really answers from the NFL. But that we'll, we'll probably never, ever get. But it's crazy, man. It, it's crazy how everything went down. But Adafi Away is clearly um, letting it be known like, hey, I, I'm not over the game. And I did not like that the Chiefs got away with a lot of holding. And there was a lot, like, there, obviously there was a lot of ticky-tack stuff. Um, there was some some soft penalties. There were some some penalties that didn't get called. Of course, some of the, the biggest ones. Um, and what was crazy about this game? Because I was thinking, initially, I remember when Warren Sharp first dropped that article about the ref. About the referee that was going to be in this game. And it was like, hey, this ref is known for favoring the away team heavy, like crazy. And then when the game first started and some of the calls started, I was like, oh, my gosh, this can't be happening. Please don't let this happen to the Ravens. I really hope this ain't really this ain't going down. And then throughout the game, it just kept happening over and over. And I was like, oh, my goodness, it's really happening. Now, the Baltimore Ravens, they still did have opportunities. So I don't want to say it's all on the refs, but they definitely had their hand in a lot of it. Um, there were some of the biggest calls. Um, obviously, there, there's a lot of holding calls that were missed, and, and I mean, the holding calls can really go both ways. Because if the ref, the refs could, they could have called holding like every play if they wanted to. I know that's always said by the commentators and stuff, and that's true. They could, they could always call holding, but some of the bigger calls, the the non-pass interference call, 
and they tried to explain it. They said, "Oh, the well, the the, the ball, it, uh, the, it, oh, it had already been intercepted by the time um, Isaiah likely got interfered with." That was not true. <laughs> you could clearly see that uh, live. You could see it on the replay. You could see it, and it, yeah, it was terrible. But um, then the the ones on Odell Beckham Jr. The non pass interference is on Odell Beckham Jr. Watching the replays, I said, "Wow, man, this is crazy. This is just it was wild, man." And then um, the non defensive holding call on Isaiah Likely, where they literally grabbed him, wrapped him, around, but it nothing. Um, now Justice Hill, Justice Hill, he could have got called for tripping uh, in the end zone because Chris Jones, who was just literally dominating all game, he's a dominant player, but he was dominating all game. Uh, he had broke through the offensive line. Hey, what's new? Uh, but he broke through the offensive line, and Justice Hill, he put out a little foot. <laughs> he said, "Oh no, you ain't getting to my quarterback." So I wonder if. Since that happened in the end zone, I know holding in the end zone results in the safety, but I don't know if they if they would have called clipping or tripping, what would have that what would that have resulted in if they called that? But either way, um, even with that penalty right there, uh, the 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 Chiefs they uh, oof, it uh, it was frustrating. Then all the ticky tack stuff too, um, with tra the Travis Kelsey like with the Zay Flowers the the taunting call like really they called taunting, but you know Travis Kelsey he was celebrating all game because he just knew. He just knew, like, hey, we, we got this right now. And, and this is why right now the, the Chiefs are the new Patriots because they are the, the official villains of the NFL. Um, while they keep winning, and, and you cannot deny their talent. They have some very talented players. Patrick Mahomes, one of the best in the league. Travis Kelsey, one of the best in the league. Isaiah Pacheco, he's really nice. They got some nice players and whatnot. Jarius Sneed, one of the best cornerbacks in the league this year. They got some really, really great players on the team. But it just a lot of times it can take away from it when everything goes their way, especially in the biggest moments. Like I know this season penalties were uh, called a lot against the Chiefs in some cases, but in this game, in this moment, in this scenario, in this situation, in this circumstance, it it went in favor of the Chiefs heavy. So I, I get why Adafi away, why he's still not over the game. I get why fans are still not over the game. And then ugh, I, I hate it. Um, we know NFL is a business, but I, I hate that part of it where you got to have a conversation about the R word. And that's, yeah, that's where it gets a little, because I, because look, and we've talked about this throughout really a lot of season, every season. We talk about it every now and then, but um, I, I, see, I, I would always call it out with Ravens fans because I, I would see and of course we call stuff out with Ravens fans the most because we engage with Ravens fans the most um but I would see it a lot in well not a lot because the Ravens they only lost three real games and then they lost that fourth game against the Steelers but a lot of starters didn't play but I would see if the Ravens would lose people would say rigged 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 and or if the Ravens were losing at a point they were like rigged 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 and I'd be like, hold up, what? Like, okay, I bet if if Ravens were winning, you wouldn't say that. But in this game, with the whole all the Taylor Swift stuff and everything that's come out about, um, everything that's come out about uh, all the business that she's made the NFL, all the money that she's made the NFL with her and Travis Kelsey they dating and stuff, and uh, ugh, just ah, I, I don't know, man. I I don't know, man. So uh, again, NFL's a business. And <clears throat> businesses are in it to make money. So could they have taken advantage of Taylor Swift and be like, oh, ah, hey, you will know better than me. Um, but again, Raven, Raven still did have their opportunities. But obviously it just, yeah, it, they, they didn't take advantage. Of it. And, and then it's like you an, another thing that makes you think about that R word. And I, I hate it. But another thing that makes you think about it is... How does this happen? Like, how how does this happen to where you are? Like, we think about 2019. And, again, I hated having the comparisons with this season in 2019, but this game brought them all right back up again. How do you have this great Russian offense, amazing Russian offense, amazing running offense, and that's your bread and butter? Not to say you can't pass because you obviously could pass because the ball is doing this thing, the receivers doing their thing overall. And... How do you have this amazing Russian offense, but then in this game, you decide, oh, nope, not not doing it, not running that ball, nope, mm -mm. 
our running backs are going to get six carries. And not that you go into a game thinking, all right, this running back is going to have 10 carries. This running back is going to have 12. This running back is going to have three. Not that you go into a game plan like that because you don't because you want to go with the hot hand. But you never even gave anybody an opportunity to get the hot hand. So it's just weird how the Baltimore Ravens, they had an identity. They had an identity that literally worked all season and then worked for them in a crazy way all season. But then at this stage of the season, they're like, you know what? Scrap that. We ain't doing that. Oh, no, we're going to go the exact opposite of who we are at the biggest moment of our entire season. In order to get to the Super Bowl, we're going to be completely who we are not. So it just makes you think. It makes you wonder. Because they, they did the same thing in 2019. Uh, even in even in 2020. I think there was a lack of running. To, now, the Bills' defensive line was nice, though. So in 2020, I, I can't really say too much for that one. But And then there was a pick six in the end zone where they ran the same play twice. And Lamar stared down. Um, I think he stared down either Mark Andrews or Hollywood. On the, the play on the, the play before the pick six, I think Holly, one of them, either Hollywood or Mark Andrews open. But Lamar, he threw it to, oh, then pressure came in. And I think he was going to throw it, but then pressure came in, and then I forgot what happened. But then the very next play, they ran like the same exact play. Lamar stared down whoever he was throwing it to. Then it was the pick six. And then, like, a couple drives later, Lamar got injured, and he was out for the game. Um, But then in uh, 2021, he got hurt. Then 2022, he got hurt. But then this year, what gave me hope is like, all right, the Texans game started off slow, but then they picked it up a lot in the second half, and they went crazy. I'm like, all right, yes, let's go. We know who we are. We still got our identity, still making stuff happen. Let's get it, Ravens. But then in the next game, um, it's like, oh, that. So I was like, oh, okay. Because, again, they just went exactly opposite of who they are. And it just, like, again, stuff like that just, it really makes you wonder, like, hmm, hmm. And you hate thinking about it, but you got to think about it. But it is what it is, man. It is exactly what it is. So that that's why I, I do not fault any fans for not getting over the game. Now, I do not fault any fans for having big questions about the the game, the integrity of the game and whatnot, the business of the game. I, I, I get that because... It was like um, some of the stuff that was being called and was not being called, and all the, it. It reminded me. Y'all remember the Saints game, the Saints Rams game from what? What year was that? Uh, whatever. I think that was the year where it was that boring, the very boring Super Bowl, very uh defensive Super Bowl. But it was just really boring. It, it was probably the most boring Super Bowl I, that I ever watched uh, between the Rams and the Patriots. Um, but in that game it was just like ugh, like that Saints Rams game with the pass interference the clear pass interference and they just they said no we ain't calling that we ain't, you think we gonna call it? no we ain't calling that and it was a uh it was a big call it changed the game it changed everything and um well it was a big no call but it was clear and, and it just it just made you wonder and there's a lot of other stuff that make you wonder too but um anyway that 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 was just that man I, I know we're going on sort of a tangent and whatnot but Feel like I had to sort of get this off my chest. Cause I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, and um, I guess Adafi Away just gave me the layup. He gave me the alley. I mean, he gave me the alley, and I'm trying to slam dunk that thing in there. So anyway, um, I get it. Fans that are frustrated, I get it. Fans that are upset, I get it. Fans that um, again will will not. I can't necessarily say not be able to move on, but I I, I get it because it happened, and the way that it happened. It's frustrating how it happened. It is extremely frustrating. It's, it's just, it's rough, man. It's rough. Um, so that's that. Uh, I appreciate y'all. <laughs> I love y'all. Thank y'all for, uh, I, I know, I, I will tell y'all. Let me know how y'all feel about everything. But y'all y'all do it every single video. So I feel like we ain't even got to say it. Y'all, y'all always let y'all thoughts be known uh, every time. But um, <clears throat> hey, congrats to the Chiefs. Congrats to the uh, the 49ers um, getting a rematch of the Super Bowl that happened in Miami uh, back in 2019 season, right? I think it was 2019 season, yeah. So the year 2020, um, getting a rematch. We'll see if the uh, 49ers can avenge themselves from those years back. Oh, we'll see if the Kansas City Chiefs uh, will handle business again. And Patrick Mahomes and them will have won three out of 
three out of four Super Bowls or three out of five? I think three out of four, right? Because they lost to the they lost to the Bucks. Yeah, yeah. So it will be. So yeah, this will be his fifth Super Bowl. No, fourth, fourth, fourth. Because they beat the 49ers, then they lost to the Bucks. They beat the Eagles. So this will be his fourth Super Bowl. Okay, so he could possibly win three out of four. Um, or he could go two and two. Either way, like, either record is great um, because that's four Super Bowl appearances. Four. Uh, that's a lot. Some people don't even get one. But four is a lot. Um, and to have already won two, like, you got two in your back pocket already. Like, you already stamped. You, you like you're, you're done. You don't have nothing else to do, but add to it. Um, and for the Forty ers like for a team, it's, it's big for them because they're a team that's been close a lot every single year. It's like Forty ers just every single year they like it's like they're in the NFC Championship every single year. They always there, always. It's like Forty ers a team that you just know are gonna be there. You know they gonna uh, <clears throat> they're gonna be around. Uh, at the end of the season, you know they're gonna advance in the in the postseason. You know they're gonna win some playoff games in the postseason, and you know that they're gonna have an opportunity. So, this is their chance to finish the story, All right? Shout out to Cody, right? <laughs> Shout out to the Rock taking that. But anyway, um, but yeah, congrats to those two teams. Uh, it, it's crazy to think back, um, on this season and how everything went. Cause again, uh, you hate it because we just knew. That this was Ravens season We just knew that this was Ravens year We just knew that the Ravens were going to uh, They were going to get it They were going to make it happen Everything just lined up So many things lined up with injuries So many things lined up with the schedule So many things lined up with other teams losing So many things lined up with Ravens taking advantage of opportunities So many things lined up with them winning So many th things lined up with them getting players back So many things lined up with just the, the seeding the play the, it, Everything was just lining up perfectly But along came Taylor Swift <laughs> 